I'm going to pick this up and play it in a couple of seconds and you'll see just how accurate the intonation is. But before I do that, I wanted to bring you, especially you Patreon guys, I want to bring you in close and show you uh, what I ended up doing on this one. So the bridge saddle, although compensated, it cantilevers, this is very unusual, it cantilevers back towards the bridge pins. So the first string, the second string, the fifth string, and the sixth string all go beyond the confines of the original bridge slot. The only two strings that fall within the confines of the original slot are the G and D string, which is if you've been watching my videos, they're usually the ones that need to be cantilevered in this direction. So not too sure what happened in the shop that day, but uh, this bridge slot uh, could have actually been moved back. But we compensated it, and you'll hear it in a second, it's perfectly in tune. Let me bring you to the other end. So this is the nut. In this instance, the low E, the A, and the D all cantilevered past the end of the fingerboard. The G almost sits right at the end of the fingerboard. I think it does move forward a little bit. The B is definitely forward at the end of the fingerboard. And the high E is actually cut back past the end of the fingerboard a little bit. So that's what we ended up doing to get this guitar to behave. And now for the first time since he's owned it, Ken can just relax and play. Silky smooth action, perfectly in tune. Let's have a listen. Well, you could see how much displacement was needed to get this thing to line up. But listen. to spend more time playing but I gotta get on to that other guitar. So here's one last look at the compensated cantilevered bridge saddle that actually cantilevers backwards towards the bridge pins and here's the last sneak peek at the compensated nut for the 12 to 53 at concert pitch. Cheers.